Hello everyone and I hope you all are doing well. Welcome to another fantasy match preview for the first game we are here to the second one between the strikers and the sixers and this preview is powered by fan to play. They have some amazing words that are available to you so ensure that you download the app right away and let's look at what we have in store with us along with Nikhil bhai who's here with us to carry you through this preview. Yes, so thank you so much for having me. Very happy to start the BBL well. Uh, always a pleasure when you win a mini jail on fan to play because you know who oh, extra batter ke badle, extra all rounder liya. So benefit hota hai, so it feels nice. So all rounders FC continue and yes, let's continue to work hard. Yes, absolutely. The all rounders FC continues and note first before we get to the venue conditions we wanted to announce the jersey giveaway winner for the first game and it's Sainath coincidentally the question was how many runs will Stoinis score no one predicted 0, 1, 2 or 3 or 4 that was the amount of confidence you had but well he scored 5 runs and Sainath you're the winner you can share your details with us address and contact details and we'll happily send over the jersey to you. And on that note, let's look at first up, I will be for this game. So, Nikhil Bhai, how do you feel Adelaide Oval is going to behave come the first game? I think, thankfully, we had the World Cup in Australia. So, most of us will have some evidence and clear idea that how games have been at the venue. Uh, so, Jessa bhi, mm-hmm. dekha, they had been movement. And in the first game as well, expectedly, Canberra should have been a very good high scoring menu, average score around 171, but that was mm-hmm. not the case. So, I think predominantly it will still be a good batting wicket, but uh, pass score of around 160, I don't think the wicket should change much, but I feel it is better to mm-hmm. bat first uh, in Adelaide. And uh, then, if you get good movement up top, like you know, stars and thunder showed that you could always take wickets regularly. So I think it will probably be a more even game. Uh, but I still feel the side batting first might have a bit more advantage. Pacers continue to rule the roost here. But there is one legendary spinner that I'm sure will be very eager to take a lot of wickets. Yes, absolutely. While Pacers rule the roost, uh, Rashid Khan will always have other ideas whenever he comes home. So, on that note, let's look at what base team we have set for this game. Yes. Hopefully, more better. So, what people might so do, let's look at. I don't think that is going to be the case. Base team that we have set up. So, till it loads on your screen and we get over the technical glitches. This is the yes. team that we've gone with. In the keeping section, Josh Filippi yeah. and two batters in Jake Weatherall and James Vince. Both of them are sort of the kind of guys who will take risk after risk. And hence, we've opted for them. And yes, that's why you see two big names mess- missing here. And Nikhil Bai will tell you more about them. Uh, one of them will definitely make it to the Grand League section. So, I'm keeping him off uh, from discussion from here. But, uh, like I said, availability is also a concern. Uh, we've seen Smith confirmation that he will play. But when he will play after once the Australia games are done. So, that is something to keep in mind. And there are enough often options in Curtis Patterson. Then you have Daniel Hughes, Jordan Sale, Moses in the case. Whoever plays and you feel will do well to begin with is someone, someone that you can bank on. Josh usually starts a tournament well. Unless he gets a very good left arm threat that uh, we know mm. sometimes works against him and for him as well. And James Wins again is a reliable guy who has had enough uh, experience and played a lot of BBA. So he should be, he's the one that we are banking to uh, mm. cover up for the uh, other 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 batters. And Jake Weatherall again, he's played a key part, sometimes up and down. So we'll have to see where he's slotted and then pick him accordingly. But I, I'll, I'll again feel that you'll have enough all-rounders and bowlers who you can make the most of. So, uh, I'll rely on them as my captain, vice-captain picks as well. Maybe in the small league. Grand league, of course, you can try everybody. Uh, 
that, that takes us to the all rounders and the bowlers. So we have packed the section. We have gone with four all rounders: Sean Abbott, Matt Short, who was the third highest run scorer last year, and is going to turn his arm over. Hayden Kerr, who again was opening the batting at points, is expected to give you full quota, hence vice captain. Yep. And Colin de Grenome will be interesting to see how he's used. He's someone who does bowl yep. well in the power plays, so let's see if he's used there. And in the bowling, we have gone Adelaide dominant, uh, but you can see that in the all rounders, we are covering up with key bowling options from the Sixers yep. too. They have a bowling option or two more, hence maybe all of those guys don't come in and bowl their full quotas. So we have gone with Ben Dwashes, yeah. Wes Ega, Rashid Khan as captain, and Peter Siddle, who is someone you have to watch out for, especially when he bowls first. Yes, uh, as Virat Matthew said, there are other bowling options as well. But like we did in the first game, the the key is to try and identify bowlers who will bowl at least three overs. So what that does is, and if they are bowling in the power surge, we we'll discuss about using the power surge and using the bowlers that are going to bowl in the power surge. Fazal was one of the key picks there, and he took two in an over. So those are the kind of insights yeah. that you also want to see after the first set of games are done, because that is what will tell you who is the bowler that you know teams are looking for to bowl in the power in the power surge. And again, be very smart. The other team can also ensure that okay, if they don't want to face a particular bowler. They can opt for the power search at a time where they know at least this guy will not bowl more. So there are a lot of tactics involved as well. So make notes of those kind of uh, events. There is uh, Henry Thornton as well, who I think may play, but there is no Chris Jordan as well. So you have to then factor in that how do Sixers use Sean, Carr, and Roshes? Sometimes you see one of them bowl a lot up top and just leave one at the end. So. All of this will be very important. So, if you get any hint, of course, we'll get the the good thing about the event. The reveal is you get enough time. Post or let the lineups are out in time for you to think and visualize that. Okay, these are the guys who will be used in this scenarios, and then you can definitely try multiple combinations. Yes, absolutely. And interestingly, in the pre-game show today, they also mentioned Michael Asi mentioned who is going to bowl in the surge, and that is yes. very kind of him to help us out on who will yeah. bowl in the surge and in the death. So watch out for any pre-game interviews because you might yep. get some information from there. And let's look at now what our grand league options for this game are. So now over to our grand league options for this game. And first up, Nikhil, why you start this time? Yeah, I've I've gone proper Jaima Tari today, and I'm going with two batters. Uh, one of them, as I said, I'll not talk about him much in the in the first part, and that is Chris Lynn. I think he's changed uh, sides. Of course, I don't think we know that he's changed sides. I think it's going to be a very critical tournament for him, and he's coming off a decent T10. I'll not say it was uh, crazy good or what, but Whatever, whatever you saw of Chris there, you felt that maybe the fluency was back, and uh, you know he could potentially have a very good uh, year. If he starts well, then I'm definitely very happy to bank him uh, in most of the games. So that is the first proper Jaima Tadipi. The other may not be much of that in that sense because see, everybody is likely to make Josh captain or vice captain from Sixers. So I'm going to go with James wins, especially if he chases uh, again. Tricky call, but you can definitely go with who you feel uh, will come with. Yes, some daring picks there, and some picks that can take you all the way up, like Nikhil by one in the first game. So yes, keep make note of those and make multiple teams. And uh, my two grand league picks for this game. First up from the Sydney Sixers, I'll go with one of Daniel Hughes or Curtis Patterson. Not sure if both will play. But one of one of the two, whoever plays, in case both play, then whoever bats higher. And this is in the case where they bat first. And uh, from the strikers, I'll go with Wes Agar as captaincy or vice captaincy, especially if he's bowling first, because that extra bounce can trouble a bit that kind of bounce that he gets. So keep that in mind. And in terms of interchanges, Ben Maneti was playing for the Sixers last year. He's going to be playing for the strikers this year. So, in case you're looking for some revenge points, like we see many players performing against X teams, so yes. that is a good scenario for you to try. And uh, I'm very interested to see how Chris Lynn is going to face up to Stephen O'Keefe. So, Mikhil, why keep WhatsApp ready for that point of the day? And uh, on <laughs> on that note, we'll wrap up 
the view thank you so much to everyone who tuned in if you haven't downloaded the fan to play app already ensure that you do so right away and make sure that you make the most of the leaderboard and the best deposit offers thank you so much for tuning in and have a great game let's keep trying keep winning let's have a good game